quick video about a forced revival going on right now in our country, around the world. It's called Woke. Uh, I do say it's a forced revival. Uh, it is a not a new form. Uh, it's a new name. It's a rebranding. Um, it's an old morality being reborn. It is paganism rebranded. Um, there is a morality in paganism that is the opposite of the morality in Christianity. What Christianity would call immoral, paganism or wokeism calls it moral. Um, in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, it talks about uh, the wicked consider the righteous an abomination. And the righteous consider the wicked an abomination. It goes back and forth. Um, there is there is no middle ground. They are in complete opposition of each other. Uh, an example of this would be on the topic of abortion. Uh, abortion in wokeism, abortion in paganism, is not immoral. It is not only moral. It is holy. It is sacred. It is considered loving toward the mother and the baby. That is morality in paganism. That is morality. It is moral in wokeism to view things that way. Their goal and they are endeavoring to elevate these pagan moralities to mainstream to cause them to pe become the, the normal uh, mentality of society. Uh, there are verses in the Bible in the book of um, e um, Ephesians chapter 6, it's a big chapter there, talking about spiritual warfare, principalities and powers in the unseen realm. Um, these are the persons without bodies who are endeavoring to abolish the image of God on earth. And they're using this pagan morality to do it. They're, this forced revival of paganism, wokeism is what they're now calling it, is um, it's coming from principalities and powers and unseen realms. <clears throat> and as a Christian, the way we combat that is hearing from the Holy Spirit, spending time in the Holy Spirit, being immersed in the Word of God, hearing the Holy Spirit on what to pray, how to pray, when to pray, and not being afraid. So just wanted to uh, bring about awareness of this stuff. Um, it's been on the fringes here in America for a long time and around the world. Um, there, uh, Some of these bales, these, these principalities are bales, Baal's above, that's Satan. Uh, you have uh, Baal Ishtar, that's where you get the word Easter from. Ishtar, that Baal, she is the, the goddess um, of fertility. Uh, she is the patron goddess for prostitutes. Um, she is the patron goddess for taverns and bars uh, uh, and debauchery. Uh, there are Mesopotamian tablets that are in museums that when translated into English um, they praise Ishtar uh, for her ability it says oh Ishtar you have the ability to turn a man into a woman and to turn a woman into a man let that sink in and they have uh, carvings and inscriptions along these plates that show um, people dancing with scalpels in their hands. So this is nothing new, this transgender, gender identity, um, gender altering um, movement is nothing new. This is coming from uh, ancient fallen angels that are trying to abolish the image of God on earth. Genesis says that God made man male and female. In his image he made them, male and female. 
God is the creator. He laid that guideline down. Anything he lays down, Satan wants to pervert and turn upside down. So, uh, I pray that we would all be in step with the Holy Spirit and uh, not be afraid. Love, love these people. Um, you don't need to go out and do them harm. They, they need our prayers. They need our love. They need the love of God. And we are God's hands and feet and His mouthpiece. And what is most important is us being obedient, saying and doing and being where God wants us to be and, and loving these people the way He would have us to. And if possible, snatching them from the flames. And then also an intercession. Crying out to God uh, for His kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, the victory is ours, by the way. We win in the end. <laughs>